What's up everybody? My name is Alex and welcome to my channel. With Halloween fast approaching, I decided it'd be cool if I did a Halloween themed project and I opted to do a talking, well, screaming pumpkin, the one you saw in the intro. It will detect as people pass by it and it will scream at them, hopefully scaring them a little in the process. This is a relatively simple project that doesn't require any soldering, so it's suitable for everybody, provided you can find the parts. It does require a little bit of coding, but I'll walk you through the code and I'll also have it available for download on my website so you can grab it and take it from there. So without further ado, let's take a look at how it's done. All right, uh, so I'm gonna be using the Arduino Uno as the platform for this project. And I also have the Adafruit Music Maker Shield, uh, which plugs into the Arduino. Uh, and the cool thing about it is that it can actually play MP3s. Uh, the mp3s are stored on an SD card, and I'll show you how to set all that up later. Uh, the SD card goes into the shield, uh, and the shield plugs into the Arduino and plays whatever mp3s are on there. It actually has an audio jack, which you can use to plug in headphones or speakers, or mine actually has an amplifier, and you can plug in speakers there directly. Uh, so the shield plugs in on top of the Arduino, uh, and those pins are just pass-through pins, which will allow you to access the Arduino pins on top of the shield. Uh, so it plugs on top like so. Uh, next up, we have the ultrasonic sensor, model number HC-SR04. Uh, and it has four pins, power, ground, echo, and trigger. Uh, and basically, whatever crosses in front of the ultrasonic sensor, uh, the pumpkin is going to detect uh, and it's going to play some sounds off of the music shield. Uh, so I'm going to use this breadboard to actually connect this to it because I want to connect something else as well. Uh, and the first thing we'll need to do is provide power to the breadboard. So I'm just going to connect the positive lead to the plus 5 volts of the Arduino and the negative lead to the ground of the Arduino. So black wire goes to ground, a red wire goes to 5 volts. And now we can connect this guy. And uh, the way I have it hooked up is obviously power and ground are first going to go to the breadboard. And then the orange wire, which is the echo wire, is going to go to pin 9. And the yellow wire, which is the trigger wire, uh, is going to pin 10. And obviously, I have 9 and 10 in my code, and I'll have that code up on my website. Uh, but you guys feel free to use whichever pinouts you want. All right, so this next step is totally optional, but I thought it would be a cool idea. I had this sound sensor or music sensor. Uh, and it has a little microphone at the front that can pick up sounds uh, that they're playing. Uh, and it has a variable resistor that you can use to control the sensitivity. Um, and this sensor actually has an output pin, which you can uh, hook up to something like an LED. It will essentially blink in sync with the sound that's being detected. So my idea was when someone crosses in front of the ultrasonic sensor, um, we pick up the sound that starts playing, we blink an LED, and that essentially mimics like the pumpkin is talking. Uh, so the sound sensor also has a power and a ground pin, which we need to hook up. And then uh, this lead is the output from the sensor, and I can connect that one pretty much anywhere on the breadboard since it's empty right now. And then I'll take an LED, um, and the shorter, the negative lead of the LED will be connected to the blue wire, the output from the sensor, and the positive lead will just go to a different pin of the, on the breadboard. And then I'll take a current limiting resistor, just so the LED doesn't burn, up, burn out. Uh, and this is just a 200 ohm resistor, which will get connected from the positive lead of the LED uh, to positive power, to plus 5, essentially. And uh, finally, I have this power bank, which is really cool because it's a power bank, obviously, so we can use it to power the device, but it's also a speaker, so we can use it for speaker output as well. 
so first of all, let's connect the Arduino to the power bank so that we give it some power. And as you can tell, the sound sensor is already on because the LED is on over there. And it's basically just waiting for sound to be played at this point. Uh, now I'm going to plug in a regular audio cable from the Adafruit Music Shield output uh, to the input into my power bank slash speaker. Uh, obviously, uh, this sensor is just going to pick up the sound being played here. Uh, technically speaking, I didn't really need to go with this indirect approach. I could have just taken the sound out of the shield itself. But I had this sensor lying around, so I figured, okay, might as well just use it. Uh, now, all that's left to do is for us to walk in front of the pumpkin. And as you can see, the LED is blinking uh, with the sound being played. In that one as well. And at some point it's gonna stop, and then when someone walks past it again, it's gonna play a different sound. All right, now that we're done with the hardware, let's take a look at the software setup. So the first thing you're going to want to do is uh, find a few audio files that you want to play on your pumpkin. So in my case, I chose a bunch of growls and screams that I found off the internet. So things like this, for example. I'm hoping that these sounds will be startling enough to scare whoever crosses close to the pumpkin. Uh, okay, so now that you have your sounds, uh, you put them all in the root of your SD card. So basically what you see here, this is supposed to be on your SD card without any folders or anything extra on there. And another important thing is that they are named exactly as you see here. So you start with track 001, and then you go track 002, 003, etc, 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 and you just keep increasing that number until you reach the end of however many sound files you're going to have on there. After that's done, your SD card is ready and you can unplug it from your PC and you can plug it into the music shield. So let's take a look at the code next. So here at the top, uh, we have a bunch of setup uh, for the music shield and all the necessary libraries and stuff. So you can kind of ignore all of this if you're copying the code from the website. Uh, then there's some important bits over here, which is the uh, trigger pin and the echo pin. Remember when we were talking about the hardware, I told you that those are on pin 9 and 10. So if you want to change those on your Arduino, uh, this is basically where you'll need to update these pins to match whatever you're going to be using. Another important uh, variable is this trig distance over here. And this is basically a measure of how far away someone needs to cross close to your pumpkin before the sound triggers. So maybe you want to tweak this so that it doesn't trigger when someone's extremely far away from it, but then when they get closer, that's where it triggers. And then if we keep going down, uh, this sounds array will need to contain all the files that you're going to put on your SD card. If you can see here, I have track 001, 02, 03. Basically, I have all of them uh, listed here. Uh, if you don't put them in here, then some of the files on the SD card might not be playing. Uh, and then basically the count of however many files are in here needs to be updated in, in this variable num sounds. So this needs to match however many numbers you have on here. Uh, sorry, however many tracks. All right, so we'll skip this function for now. We go into the setup. Uh, the setup basically just sets the trig pin and the echo pin as output and input. Uh, it calibrates the sensor. It does an initial distance reading just to make sure that the sensor is active and everything works fine. Uh, and then it sets up the music shield. Uh, this is not like too interesting. Uh, Everything is just boilerplate code. Uh, what's interesting is maybe right here on line 114, which is where you set the volume of the mu music player. Um, and it's interesting the way this API works, uh, lower numbers equals louder volume. And I put this as a comment over here, just so I don't forget. I don't know why it works that way, but it's just something to note. So you might want to tweak this value until it works for your use case. And then we go into the main loop where first we call that update distance function and i'm going to go back to it just to show you what it what happens uh, and this is basically where the ultrasonic sensor does its work 
Uh, what happens here is we actually send an ultrasonic pulse, uh, just a short one, we go low, high, low, so just a short pulse, and then we measure and wait to get a bounce back. Uh, and after we measure how long it takes to get that bounce back, we use that to actually find the distance. So uh, the further it takes for the sound to bounce back, the further the object is, or the longer it takes, the further the object is. Uh, and we actually update this distance variable with whatever value we get. So then back here in the main loop, uh, after we call this function, that distance variable will have the current value of the objects in front of the ultrasonic sensor. And then over here, we compare that distance variable uh, to the trig distance, which is the variable I mentioned above. Uh, and we, did, we check if that distance is less than the trig distance, meaning an object is closer uh, than the threshold we want to trigger the sound at. And if that's the case, uh, then we go in here and we just draw a random number, and this is the number of sounds we have on the SD card, the value I mentioned above. So we're gonna get a number from one to however many sounds you have on the SD card, and then we're just gonna play that sound uh, on the music shield. And uh, as soon as we run this command, the execution of our application will stop until the sound has finished playing, meaning nothing else will execute. And then as soon as it finishes playing, it's just gonna go at the top of this loop again, uh, and it's going to check the distance again, etc. If someone's still closer than that distance, it's going to get another random number and it's going to play another sound, uh, and so on and so on. Basically, just going to keep going forever until we run out of batteries. So there you have it. There's nothing complicated about this code. And again, I'm going to have it up on my website. The link to that is going to be in the description below the video. I encourage you to grab this file and play around with the values until you get things working the way you like them. And if you have any issues, feel free to message me in the comments and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. The last thing that's left to do is to just stick all of the hardware inside the pumpkin and make sure that the ultrasonic sensor has an unobstructed view outside of the pumpkin so that it can detect movement. And that's pretty much it. As I said, this is a relatively simple project as long as you can find the parts or you can find suitable replacements for them. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Until next time, peace.